Hi, I'm Hazel, you're back at Saturday again, which makes it time to sit down and catch up on the wow news of the week, what I've been up to, and answer some of your questions. Before I get started, I would like to say that you are not seeing things. This does look different. I moved everything. I think I'm done moving things. It's a little hard to say. It's a spell that comes over me approximately every third year. I think, I think I'm over it, but I'm not, it's hard to be sure. <laughs> This week was a bonkers week for Shadowlands news. We had a big info dump starting with a developer announcement stream. Um, there were some content creator interviews with developers and we just know so many more things than we knew last week about Shadowlands that I can't hold them in my brain all at once. And I keep hearing about a feature that I really should know about because I've read about it three times by now and going, wait, what again? There is no way that I'm gonna get through everything in one video. So I'm gonna try to make sure that I hit the biggest pieces of news, kind of like the greatest hits, the highlights, and then anything that needs a deeper dive, I will do my best to get that done with some alpha content as a separate video. The first big headline is Shadowlands beta starts next week, which means a couple of things. First of all, they're going to be getting more people into the beta. So if you are not beta testing yet and you would like to be, uh, first of all, there's a chance. And second of all, there's a much, much, much better chance if you opt into the Shadowlands beta by going to the Shadowlands website, there's a big opt-in button. Make sure that your account is enabled and opted in for that to have a chance to be selected for the beta. Otherwise your odds are very, very, very bad unless you're like on a mythic raiding team that gets pulled in for raid testing or something. Uh, make sure you opt into the beta. Of course, opting in is not a guarantee that you're going to get beta access, but not opting in is a pretty good bet that you won't, so. The transition from alpha to beta also means that Shadowlands at this point, as they put it, is pretty much mostly Mostly feature complete, mostly, that's not how you say that word. Feature complete is where we're going with this. So we're not likely to get any new like big surprises, twists, turns in terms of like features and systems. They're not gonna just like whip an allied race out of nowhere in the first patch anyways. Um, everything that is going to be in Shadowlands should be more or less mostly on the beta when it comes out next week. So it's gonna be more about tuning and bug fixing and making sure everything actually works and is as balanced as can be hoped for when Shadowlands does eventually release, which brings us to the next piece of news. The Shadowlands release window has been narrowed down to fall, which is so much better than what we had before, which was quarter four of 2020. So fall means September 21st through December 21st, assuming that we're talking about a North American fall and they're not pulling some strange thing on us with like Southern Hemisphere seasons, that would be very odd. September 21st through December 21st which is not that different from quarter four, but you know, it's nice to have a release window. Um, if I was going to throw an expansion release date guess, just an unsubstantiated guess into the pile of guesses in the, in the guessing pool, where if I win, I get to say I'm right for no reason at all. Uh, let's say no mid November expansion release date. Let's say the second week of November with a pre patch about five weeks before that um, in like earlier October. The pre-patch length does have some evidence behind it. It came out in one of these interviews that four to six weeks is typical and expected for the pre-patch. So expect that, you know, four to six weeks before whenever the expansion release date is, which we don't have yet, but we will have eventually. And you know, just like fall sometime. <laughs> the rest of that initial dev stream was devoted to telling us all about so many new features. And then we heard more about them in interviews and we've seen more about them in blog posts. There's a lot of systems in this new expansion and we learned a lot more about the endgame systems over the past couple days. So here's the, the real Cliff's notes. There is a mission table in Shadowlands and it is new-ish and it's kind of strange and evocative of an auto battler, but not quite, but kind of. Unclear, looks a bit unfinished yet, but there's going to be a mission table and it's going to be a little more interesting at least design-wise than the mission table we've had before. The real question for me at least is, does this boil down to something that an add-on is still going to automate with a click or is this something that we're actually going to be strategizing and thinking about? Um, I think they're hoping for the second one, but you know, <laughs> we'll have to see if they make it there. Essentially, you're going to get covenant followers and you're also going to have troops. They're going to have abilities, they're going to have health pools, and they're going to be actually battling each other in this little interface here. As you use these different champions, you're gonna level them up and unlock access to more abilities and stuff and stats with them. So that's new. Covenants, of course, are coming and they have a bevy of features attached to them. Uh, notably, something that we just found out about is that each covenant is going to have kind of its own 
mini game for lack of a better word like its own somewhat small scale but specialized type of content so kyrian players will have access to this little sort of boss rush mini game members of the night fae covenant are going to have access to a garden a soul garden that's sort of similar to the old pandaria farm necrolords are getting this flesh crafting thing that allows them to kind of build npcs with more going on than that, but that's kind of like the very, very basics of it. And then uh, Kyrians just host ragers. They're just throwing parties and then you're catering is what I got from that interview. I'm going to have to see that one. All four of these game modes seem like things that you're going to do solo on your own. They all give a little bit of loot and just like some minor bonuses and they're all covenant specific. So, you know, you choose your covenant and you can do that content and that character can only engage with that covenant's minigame. Uh, also tied to covenant, there's all kinds of currencies. I'm gonna have to really dig in and figure out what on earth is going on with the currencies and lay it out in like some kind of cute spreadsheet or something because there's a lot going on there. But you're going to be getting anima, that's a central concept in Shadowlands, and you'll be able to direct it to various parts of your own covenant zone to unlock extra types of content in that zone. So if you are a Venthyr of Revendreth, you're going to be able to, on I think a daily basis, you know, direct anima channel it into different areas of the zone to maybe unlock like a rare to fight maybe to unlock some extra world quests maybe to you know just kind of sprucing up specific areas of your zone and it sounded like you're going to be able to progress your zone over time that was still a little bit unclear but there's definitely some stuff going on there we got a lot more information about soul binds which is basically a set of covenant specific talent trees you choose between them you've got a few different ones depending on the uh soul bind candidates for covenant like three different people you pick a person and then you choose how you're going to spec them and you're going to get different talents based on how you spec them and there's also basically like gem slots in that tree that you're going to socket conduits into which is basically imagine like a class specific gem that instead of just giving you stats it's going to give you some kind of class ability kind of relic like um, if you remember legion artifacts so you're going to socket conduits into your soulbind tree uh, conduits do function like gems in that they are destroyed if you replace one in the same slot um, but basically you're going to pick out you know your favorite conduits you're going to find them you're going to have to get them from various types of content slock it slock it them in slock it them into the slock slockets so that sounds like a that sounds like a very bad word does that mean anything bad Slockets, short for slot to socket adapter, allow socket based microprocessors to be used in slot based motherboards. When you're looking for a new purse to replace your first one, you should always look for a good amount of slockets. Okay, I'm off track. You, you, you put the things in the stuff and then you get the abilities and basically you'll be able to swap those around much more easily. Not the conduits themselves, but you're basically going to set up a few loadouts and then switch between them. You're probably going to have a soulbind set up for world questing and a soulbind set up for raiding, a soulbind set up for dungeons, and you can switch them whenever you want as long as you go back to your class hall in between. Of course, you can't forget about the crafted legendaries that we're going to be pursuing and getting our hands on. You'll be able to craft legendaries by getting base armor pieces from crafting professions. You're going to get materials and stuff from Torghast, which is of course a gameplay mode, you know, more systems. You're going to get stuff from Torghast um, and choose your legendary effect and then you're going to make your legendary. You can only wear one at a time, but you're going to be able to eventually amass a, a small collection of them that you swap in and out depending on what it is that you're doing. Um, but you're able to choose which one you're working towards right from the start so that if there is one that is best for you, at least you can start on that one first. And all of that is only part of it. There's also a thing where you can upgrade like Covenant buildings or covenant features they're not exactly buildings it kind of reminded me of the towers that we built in the broken shore but these ones seem permanent there's like transport networks that you're able to upgrade and there's just a lot going on and honestly i'm feeling kind of overwhelmed i think all of this is probably going to make more sense after we've had more time to play with it kind of like subconsciously absorb it, like sleep on it for a few weeks. What I really need to know is I want to figure out how all of these different things fit into like your average day of gameplay in Shadowlands. Because right now we're just looking at he lists on lists on lists of articles about this thing and this thing and do your Torghast and craft your legendaries and, and spec your soul binds and collect your anima and go into the maw and of course raid and do dungeons and PvP. And there's, it seems a lot but I imagine that there's going to be like a rhythm to it where you're not doing everything every day, hopefully. Um, I'm just waiting for myself to get smart enough where this all makes more sense to me. The developers have repeatedly said that player agency and really choosing how you want your character to play is a central idea to Shadowlands. 
and I feel like they have that like on the middle of a vision board somewhere, triple outlined in like red sharpie, and then a highlighter on it, and then a spotlight rigged to the ceiling just glaring on it. They have gone so far on character customization and player agency that there's a lot to do. Like imagine somebody who's playing WoW for the first time and they're gonna choose their character. They're gonna choose their race with their racials. They're gonna choose their class, their talents, their PVP talents. They're gonna level up. They're gonna get their covenant. They're gonna get their soul binds. They're gonna figure out which soul bind conduits they're gonna wanna use. And mind you, those have different types and slots and whatnot too. That's not just a one socket, one thing. You're gonna have more decisions to make there. They're, they're going to choose their legendary to pursue. They're going to choose the outdoor content to enable in their covenant zone. And that's on top of standard stuff like figuring out their stats and their consumables and enchants and stuff like that. All before you get to like dive into a dungeon with your friends in endgame. Class guides in Shadowlands are going to be absolute textbooks. I appreciate what they're trying to do with this, and I don't think that anybody can make the argument anymore that they're simplifying the game for noobs and mobile players or whatever we were saying. This definitely feels like a whole PC game. I'm just concerned that this level of concurrent systems and choice uh, is going to be overwhelming and just kind of require third party resources in order to make sense of. And that's always been true. I think that for a long time, it's been fairly expected that if you're going to perform to most of your class's potential that you're going to make use of, you know, guides and weak auras and, uh, you know, streams and videos and whatnot. It's just that this is going to take that to a new level. The 8.3 version of BFA does also have a lot of systems, and right now it's because we have systems patched on top of systems patched on top of systems. You know, with like Azerite Essences fixing Azerite, and then with like the Mother Vendor fixing the Essences acquisition, and then with Corruption fixing Titan Forging. You just have like a lot of layering that happened over the course of the expansion. So what they're doing here sounds like, and I think somebody said something to this extent in the interview, is they're trying to make all of the systems up front so that they can just add on to the existing systems throughout the expansion and not patch on anymore. So I just really hope that they're going to stick that landing and not have to patch on anymore because imagine this as just patch 9.0 and if they take the same path that BFA had, imagine the game in patch 9.3. So that was Wednesday with the initial developer stream and then on Thursday a number of content creators got developer interviews where they could ask more pointed questions. Uh, myself among them. <laughs> Go figure. So a number of tidbits from that, the ones that stuck out to me uh, from Mr. GM's interview with Morgan Day, there will not be bonus experience on heirlooms in Shadowlands. Nobody's happy about this. We've been kind of keeping an eye on heirlooms on Alpha for a while, and we did see that the experience on them was turned off recently. I was saying that, you know, they don't look done yet, let's wait and see. So we waited and we saw, and this is what we're seeing, official confirmation that heirlooms will not give bonus experience in Shadowlands unless they change their mind. They said that it doesn't make sense in the shortened leveling experience, essentially, and that they are looking into some other bonus to replace the experience with to make them still feel valuable and cool, but not, uh, you know, have your leveling time when they've already chopped it down to much shorter. So that's a downer, especially for people that bought their heirlooms recently because, you know, you spent a lot of gold and or, you know, event resources on these heirlooms and these heirloom upgrades. On the bright side, let's start with some positives. It does look as though, based on other things said in that interview, leveling may still be faster in Shadowlands without heirlooms and without the current experience bonus, it may still work out to be faster. So for a reference point, right now, my current average leveling time is 24 hours. That is with heirlooms and that is with the Winds of Wisdom buff. Without the Winds of Wisdom buff, it was closer to 48 hours. In this interview, the figure tossed out for kind of a roughly expected Shadowlands leveling time was 10 to 20 hours, which is still much shorter than that, even without heirlooms. The other bright side is whatever that potential replacement bonus could turn out to be. Like maybe it's run speed, maybe it's like a combat proc, maybe it makes you extremely tall, it's hard to say. It's important to remember that heirlooms are not being deleted. I have heard some people talking about how they're gone. They're not gone, they're still going to scale with you. So they do still provide the benefit of you not needing to replace gear in those slots as you level. That's a downside for some people, depending on how bored you get. But they are still going to provide that, just not experience anymore. Uh, downsides to this, aside from the fact that they're not going to provide experience anymore, which is a pretty rough bait and switch when you pay thousands upon thousands of gold for heirlooms to collect them and to upgrade them in a collection tab that has persisted through expansions and was kind of expected to continue on forever. And they're not offering refunds. That does not appear to be on <laughs> the menu. So that's a real bummer. That sucks that you've spent all this gold on these heirlooms. Maybe you used them. Maybe you didn't. Maybe you did this last week and now you feel really bad. 
Uh, that sucks. There's no good excuse for that. Personally, I am somebody that owns an almost full set of heirlooms that is largely upgraded. I have an upgraded set for each armor type. Um, and it does feel bad to hear that that's not going to give me extra experience, but I think that that's going to suck less once Shadowlands comes out because one, there's going to be so much other news between now and then. I'm just going to forget about this. That's just how my brain works. Secondly, if leveling really is that much faster than what I currently get now with my heirlooms, that's going to kind of soften the blow a little bit. And then I thought I had a thirdly, but no, it's really just those two. So I will not be mad as long as I am leveling significantly faster. If it takes me longer than 24 hours to level in Shadowlands 1 to 50 once the expansion comes out, then I am officially grumpy. Huh. <laughs> to counterbalance that with a little bit of good news, we've also learned this week that spec-specific transmogs are going to become class-wide in Shadowlands. This was specifically in a conversation about artifacts, and this has been confirmed in a blue post. The big example is maybe you're a beast mastery hunter and you want to transmog the faster uh, marksmanship artifact bow, you're going to be able to do that in Shadowlands. The thing that I really want to know, and I'm pretty sure it's going to work this way, it's implied, but I haven't seen like verbatim confirmation and I don't have character copy on alpha just yet, so I can't quite test it out, is if this means we'll be able to spec bear and cat forms, like druid form artifact forms, separately on a spec that does not have access to that artifact. I think that's what this means, because right now in the barbershop on alpha, you are able to customize your druid forms individually. You can go and set up your bear form and your cat form and your travel form and your flight form independently from your humanoid form. And assuming that artifact forms are included in that, which they really should be, that should mean that you're able to use whichever artifact bear cat forms that you want, etc. Uh, that's exciting. In the interview that I did with John Height this week, which is coming soon to YouTube in its entirety, I uh, found out about Pathfinder. There is going to be a Pathfinder achievement for Shadowlands, but instead of being tied to Rep, it's going to be tied to Renown, which is another system they talked about on Wednesday that I forgot to mention in that whole blurb because there was just too much stuff. So Renown kind of functions like Reputation. It's like a Covenant Reputation. They're very clear that it's a closed-end system. It's not an open-ended grind like Artifact Power was. Um, and there are going to be catch-up mechanics built into it from the beginning for any latecomers or any alts that switch on later. So the interesting, the thing I like about that is that if Pathfinder is tied to Renown and Renown has built-in catch-up mechanics, it means that somebody coming into Shadowlands a couple of months late is going to be able to get caught up on their Pathfinder much faster than, you know, the current Pathfinder situation where we have where people are scrambling to catch up with their reputations. He also said that the part of the Pathfinder achievement that actually enables flying is not going to be in the first version of the game, which I think was wishful thinking, but we'll have to wait and see when it actually comes in. Other news, more news. Uh, gender changes are coming to the barbershop in Shadowlands. This is something that you were previously only able to do with a cash shop transaction. Uh, you would buy a character recustomization that included like a name change, gender change, and like hair and skin and stuff. But now that skin color and all of these other options are all on the barbershop in Shadowlands, they will be moving gender changes to the barbershop as well. So that will no longer be a real money transaction, which is always good to hear. We also got more information about the Maw, which is an end game zone in Shadowlands through a blog post that they just put up. The most interesting thing from this article, I'll link the whole thing. I'm going to just put as many links below as I can. There's a lot of stuff to go through. Uh, the most interesting thing about the Maw blog post to me was this new Maw currency, Stygia. Again, a lot of currencies. I'm going to have to figure that out. Stygia is going to be used to buy buffs for the Maw slash Torghast, as well as Maw themed cosmetics. And the thing that made it really interesting to me is that if you die in the Maw, you're going to drop some of your Stygia down by your body. And if you want that back, you're going to have to make it back to where you died in order to pick it up, which is totally a Dark Souls thing. And I love Dark Souls, so I'm not mad. Obviously, in a game where resurrecting means getting back to your body in the first place, that sounds very dumb. It's important to recognize that the Maw uses kind of a battleground res mechanic where you're going to res in a fixed point. So making it back to your body should be actually challenging, assuming that you died to danger and not to just like tripping. We also learned more about the Eye of the Jailer mechanic that's going to be active in the Maw. So as you are doing things out there, as you're killing elites and completing objectives and getting your currencies and whatever, you're going to be stacking up what almost sounds like our current corruption debuff, you're going to be stacking up Eye of the Jailer, and as it passes certain thresholds, you're going to be getting increasing negative effects until you get very, very high, and then it just kind of starts to kill you. That has a daily reset, and that's going to really make you sort of pick and choose the activities that you want to do very carefully. Um, that's really interesting, and my first thought is I hate it. 
but maybe it's going to be really cool when I actually get to play it. I guess you are not going to spend too much time in the mine if you can only do a certain number of things before it like kicks you back out again. <laughs> That's one way to do time gating. In LiveWow this week, they have released a brand new shop mount that you can get for either the standard shop mount price or if you purchase a six month subscription, or if you already have a six month subscription, it's called the Steam Scale Incinerator. It looks like this. It has a very fancy special effect, um, especially if you use the mount special on it. Kind of cool. If you are already on a recurring six month subscription and you don't see the mount, go to your battle net, go to the little present icon at the top here and see if it's in there. I did not see my mount initially, and I'm like, huh, I thought I was on a six month subscription, and then I just paid for another six months, like a dum dum. <laughs> and then I was later shown this gift tab and found, wow, I actually have a Steam Scale Annihilator there, so I guess I have one for my EU account that I don't play. Uh, and this would be a forgivable mistake, except for the fact that I did the exact same thing with the Squeakers mount. I don't learn. I'm sure I'm not the only person to make that mistake, but I hope I'm the only person to make that mistake twice. And for what I've been up to this week, I got myself a fish. I have a new denizen for the aquarium that is in my office that you can now see behind me, uh, much more centrally placed in my background. Uh, he's a betta fish. His name is Ori. I've decided to name him after Farseer Ori because they're both kind of blue with like red highlights around the fins. So far, so good. I haven't noticed any other dragonfly larva in the tank and he seems to be settling in pretty well. And questions from this week. Lunamane asks, do you ever go and play a different game besides WoW to take a break? Uh, if so, do you feel like you miss WoW or you're just having too much fun? So I definitely do like log off of WoW sometimes once in a while to play other games, sometimes to play other games and sometimes to just go do like an offline hobby, like, you know, usually hanging out with the pets, like walking the dog or hanging out with the fish, that kind of thing. Um, I've never like taken a break in terms of unsubscribing from WoW to play another game. Uh, if I am playing other games, um, lately it's been Stardew Valley, I had a big stint with Animal Crossing, I do love me some Dark Souls games, that kind of thing, and then also Hearthstone Battlegrounds. I've been playing a ton of Hearthstone Battlegrounds, just kind of compulsively, usually while I'm eating. Um, and that's part of what makes me so excited for the potential like auto battle or mission table, because if they can make it good, then maybe I can consolidate my addictions here. And um, Paul wants to know, where did you learn how to set up your stream overlay in a professional sleek way? I'm so flattered. Uh, wanting to start streaming, but OBS confuses me trying to figure out how to do more than just what's currently on one of my monitors. Any videos or tutorials that you think might help? So I did a beginner OBS guide, but that was more about like bit rates and getting started. So that sounds like you're good on there. In terms of overlay, don't be afraid of images. In your scene, you can add a new image source and using that, you can select any image in your computer and then you can resize that. You can position it above or below the stack in terms of your scene to have it appear above or below things. And you can also crop things by holding down your Alt key and then dragging the border of an item that will crop it. That's very useful. But yeah, images. So I have images behind aspects of my stream. I will sometimes have an image on top of an aspect of my stream. And what I do for that is just take a screenshot of the stream, bring it into Photoshop or whatever photo manipulation app or software you like to use, and then play around with like cutting out pieces of it and then putting things on top of it. Like I just have a blurry rectangle I put behind my camera to give myself a little drop shadow on the camera. Uh, the thing that I like to say about streams though, at least in my personal taste, everybody will feel differently, but I like to think that less is more sometimes. Um, a flashy overlay can look very nice, but it can also be kind of off-putting or distracting from the content. So as long as the thing that you're trying to stream is very clear in front and center, you're off to a good start. And that's been my week. Thank you very much for watching. I'm going to try to get some of this Shadowlands content kind of together and edited for YouTube. It may not be as fast as I want it to, but I will do my best. Um, honestly, to be quite frank with you guys, I've been feeling a little overwhelmed lately just with like everything. So I've been keeping up with streaming and I'm going to do my best to not let YouTube fall by the wayside. But if I'm a little less frequent than normal, I'm good. I'm just working through some stuff. Uh, if you have a question that you would like me to answer in one of these news videos, please leave it in the comments of the most recent one. Feel invited to stop by a stream sometime to say hi if that's your speed and have a wonderful, wonderful day.